Leadership Institute that uh, provided this grant for us today. But a nice grant to have this week. The Crown Leadership Institute is just a group that helps provide conservative speakers and uh, helps to train conservatives to be placed on campuses and things like that. So uh, we'd also like to invite anybody that's, at, that's interested in coming to our meeting next Tuesday night. Uh, we're going to have a meeting next Tuesday night just to, to discuss conservative issues. If you're not a conservative, you're still welcome to come and discuss ideas and issues. So that's what we're about. Um, this time, I'd like to welcome our speaker for tonight, Dr. Mike Abbott. I, uh, I'm so glad to be here. It's my first time uh, to the great state of Nebraska, and I'm told there's a really large group of liberal basketball players who are going to get offended and run out of the auditorium in about 10 minutes, but uh, I'm just kidding. They're back there, right? Okay. Um, I am, uh, have been traveling around the country for the last few years. Uh, speaking on the issue of uh, something I call the constitutional crisis in higher education. And uh, I've come to talk to you guys about, you know, what I perceive to be a very serious constitutional crisis in this country um, that's really manifesting itself on our college campuses today. And I want you guys to know, as I come to talk about this topic, I know for a lot of conservatives, there's a conservative group that's had me here tonight, and ever since November, there's been sort of this feeling of gloom and doom. Um, I, my personal hero, I was asked recently who my personal heroes are, and one of my personal heroes is a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan, and one of the reasons why, uh, go ahead, don't hold your applause at all, uh, one of the reasons why Ronald Reagan is a hero of mine is because of his, his constant spirit of optimism, and when I get up here and share cases with you that I've been involved in over the last few years, um, my purpose in sharing these cases is not just to sort of describe what I perceive to be a serious problem uh, in higher education and sort of describe what the constitutional crisis is, but in addition to that, I want to I want to do so in a way that really provides hope and then essentially provides what I think are some answers to that crisis. Now, um, before I get started, I'm I'm really placed in a really odd uh, position this week. I'm a, I've been a college professor now for 16 years. This is actually. Uh, my 16th year, I'm 44 years old by the way, I started uh, being a college professor at the age of 28 and the first day I think my students call me Doogie Howson or something like that, but at any rate I came in there and I started teaching a number of years ago and um, since then, in 16 years, I have never had a student complaint about anything that I've said in the classroom or said to the students via email. Um, certainly never had any kind of a formal complaint that went forward as far as the dean's office until this semester. And I brought some very choice quotes from this uh, student complaint that I received for the, for the first time in my career because this illustrates exactly what is the nature of the problem that I'm talking about. Um, I sent out an email before the semester began where I welcomed all of my students and I said, my name is Mike Adams, I'm an outspoken Christian professor. And I want all of you guys to know that my Christian worldview has an impact on the way that I see you, and it has an impact on the way that I teach the class, and it has an impact upon the way that I'm going to teach, treat you this semester. I said, I want you guys to know that because I have been critical in the past of some aspects of Darwin's evolutionary theory, I refuse to view you as being merely random mutations. Instead of that, I believe that you were endowed by your creator with not only life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as divine rights that are given to you, but in addition to that, I believe you were all given some sort of a special purpose in life that you can fulfill. And because I hold that belief of you, because I look at you as being more important than merely a random mutation, the consequence of this is I'm not going to allow you to act like an idiot. You can't come into my class with a cell phone on, you can't text during the lectures, you can't come late, I laid down some rules. And that was the end of the matter. Sent the email to the students and just honestly and sincerely thought that, that was the end of the matter. Until um, I received this complaint which said, and I'm quoting portions of this complaint, it starts off by saying, I am offended, I'm by the way a student in Dr. Mike S. Adams' class, uh, CRM 105, which is Introduction to the Criminal Justice System. I'm offended by the fact that he mentions 
his faith as a Christian in an email to the entire class. I feel that that is extremely inappropriate. Okay, not I think or anything like that. I feel that it is extremely inappropriate. It was offensive to me and has no place whatsoever in a secular university. Furthermore, I don't appreciate him ridiculing Darwin's theory of evolution. And finally, it's my sincere concern that because I'm not a Christian, I'm not going to be treated well during Dr. Mike Adams' class throughout the course of the semester. Now, the honest to God truth is this. If I were the chair of the department, and there is no possible way I could ever be the chair of the department, as, a, as an out-of-the-closet conservative and Christian working with a bunch of Marxists in a department of sociology and criminology, there's no possible way I could get a single vote to be elected. But I can dream. And imagine, if I could just imagine for a second that I was the chair of the department, and heaven forbid they allowed more than one conservative Christian to actually be a member of the department. And I were the one receiving the complaint like that. There's just a few things I would say to the student. I, I write to him and I'd say, dear student, y'all forgive me, I'm just making this up off the top of my head. I would write to them and I would say, you know what? When I was in the fifth grade back in 1975 and 1976, I had a teacher who was an atheist by the name of Barbara O'Gara. And uh, Mrs. O'Gara was an atheist. And she got up the first day of class and she announced the fact that she was an atheist. And she said it repeatedly throughout the course of the semester and through the entire year. And at no point during the year did I ever give any serious consideration to writing a letter to her boss to say that I felt uncomfortable. In other words, this is my very kind way of saying that I was more mature than you at the age of 11 than you are as a college student. That might be the way that I would begin the letter. And then I would go on and I would say this, if you really, honestly, and sincerely believe in Darwin's theory of evolution, which is predicated upon the notion of survival of the fittest, that's fine. However, by writing a letter to me, complaining that you are not emotionally fit enough to withstand one joke about Darwinism, you Im immediately detract from the theory. And then finally, I would probably close out the email by saying, you know what, when you actually become a victim of some sort of an injustice, you have a right to file a claim. But the fact of the matter is, you cannot file a claim on the basis of anticipatory victimization. When something actually happens to you, write me back. And by the way, I sincerely hope that you outgrow this belief that you have that the First Amendment to the United States Constitution is actually trumped by some imagined right to feel comfortable. Now that is the way I probably would have responded to the situation. Now here's the funny thing about it, and actually there's nothing humorous about it at all. The chair of the department who gets a hold of this uh, this complaint, who happens to be a Marxist, gets a hold of it and writes back to the student with specific instructions on how to file a formal complaint against me with the dean. And let me tell you folks, that is the reason why I am so glad I wasn't in that position to respond. And I'm so glad that I had to take the time to try and find out who this student is and to send some sort of a nasty message to them. Because it occurs to me in looking at the response of that Marxist professor, who is in fact the chair of my department, it occurs to me exactly what the problem is.